All right. Well, today we've got a Cafe Italiano espresso machine. Uh, it's a pod machine, and I'll talk some more about what pods are a little later. Uh, but uh, it was on Facebook Marketplace. Originally, I think they were trying to sell it. Nobody bought it, so they uh, turned the price to free. Uh, I had to drive a little bit to get it. Um, but it's here now, uh, and we're going to take a look at it and tell you what I learned about it and uh, see if we can get it fixed. So, um, the machine is made in Italy. Cafe Italiano by Euro Spirit. Uh, it was made in 1999, serial number 56. The actual company is called Techno System. The type is Blitz Coffee and Cappuccino. There's a whole lot of information on the internet about cappuccino machines. But not this machine. <laughs> uh, I can't find anything on it. There's no manual. Uh, there's no information. There are no dealers. Uh, everything that I've uh, that looks promising ends up at a dead end. So uh, I'm going to share with you what I learned about it. And hopefully that will be useful to you. And uh, here we go. I'm going to take the cover off. I'm not going to make you watch me do that. It's some screws around the edge. Um, be right back. Before we look at the inside, I thought I'd just take a minute and walk through what the controls are. Because it's, at least to me, I'm not a coffee machine guy. So it wasn't obvious to me what all this stuff does. Uh, so this switch right here, obviously main on off. That one does have <laughs> on off. And when you turn it on, a light lights up and uh, the machine starts using... 750 watts, so uh, one of the boilers is coming on. And you kind of hear the boiler coming on. They, When that boiler comes up to temperature, this light here will light green. Um, in the back, there's a bucket. If I remove the bucket, you notice that goes red and the machine shuts off. So I'm going to put the bucket back. And the machine comes back on, and it's heating again. Uh, once the machine comes up to temperature, there are two main controls. Uh, this is a, a two-boiler machine, and we'll look at those in a minute. There's a brew boiler and a service or steam boiler. The brew boiler is a smaller one. Um, there's also a pump. Uh, and so... When we turn on this switch here, it will manually turn on a pump to begin the, uh, the brew service. A pod gets placed in here. The handle compresses and seals the pod. And then the, with a cup under, it's hot now and the brew boiler will cause the pump to come on. comes on a little slow takes a little while to get going so do I at this age but I'm not sure whether that's the machine or whether there's a, a little clog going on there we'll uh, we'll take a closer look at it a little bit down the road uh, the other thing so that's the brew and then if you want just hot water then under this nozzle and that has a better flow to it it doesn't need to have the flow or well, the pressure that it does uh, when it comes out of the pod nozzle, so that's probably uh, okay. Got a good healthy flow there. So, those are kind of the things that work off of the, uh, the brew boiler. Across the top, the switch is being up all in the off position. It's not obvious. Turn this, now I've just turned on the steam boiler. I'm not dispensing steam, this button dispenses steam. So I turned on the steam boiler, I know that because it's using 937 watts. You can kind of see that in the background. I'm going to turn it back off. Alright, let's, uh, let's walk through what I think I know about uh, how this thing works. So, uh, 
five liter bucket hose, there's a filter that goes on the end of the hose, um, goes to pump, hose comes out of the pump, goes to the tree, the tree doesn't have any valves or anything in it to go to the uh, boiler. So it goes to the, the brew boiler. Brew boiler uh, then uh, under pressure empties to the uh, brew nozzle directly below or when the button is pressed for hot water uh, this solenoid is activated and water comes out of the uh, water nozzle on the front here. There's also a, a solenoid here uh, that lets excess pressure, under excess pressure, allows water to return to the reservoir here. I'm not sure what conditions or what it is that turns that on. It may happen shortly after the boiler cycles. I don't know. Um, and it may happen shortly after the pump turns off to make sure that the system isn't left under, under pressure. Other place water can go when the when the pump is on is uh, this solenoid uh, kicks on when it sees that the uh, boiler needs water it does that when this sensor uh, is no longer in water so if, if you were to pull this wire <laughs> then it would attempt to fill the boiler When you call for steam, the solenoid up opens here and steam is dispensed through the nozzle out front here. A couple other controls that I know of or things I know of that are going on with the water. Um, this is adjustable pressure valve uh, for the steam boiler. If the pressure, the set pressure is exceeded, then it kind of goes into this little cup, goes through this hose, and then exits through the front into the drip tray. Oh. The actual heat of the boiler is controlled by this. Let me back up a little bit. By this. Um, I'm not even sure how it works, but there's a micro switch on the bottom of it that. Uh, cycles the boiler on and off depending on uh, its current state. The actual control of the boiler happens through two relays down here. There's a top and a bottom relay. The bottom relay controls the back boiler. And the top relay controls the, the brew boiler. Um, One of the reasons it's not a good idea to uh, try to clear these machines with uh, vinegar or solutions in general is uh, there's no easy way to empty this boiler, the steam boiler. If it fills up with vinegar water, <laughs> I don't know how you would get it out of there. There's no way to pump it uh, back out. There's no drain plug or anything like that. <coughs> So descaling uh, this unit by filling this up with vinegar would be a problem. Uh, it would be a problem because not only would it descale the brew boiler, but it would attempt to fill the. Uh, it could attempt to fill the steam boiler, and I don't know how you would unfill the steam boiler. Uh, electric comes into this block. Um, the hot side turns from black to brown and runs through this. Uh, temperature based breaker essentially and the breaker then uh, energizes the on off switch. I'm going to turn it on to let it start warming up. We can hear the boiler starting. Now that that's on uh, the other switches are 
are live and we've, we've turned on the on the boiler. There is a temperature sensor on the top of the boiler right there. Temperature sensor um, right. temperature sensor either turns on this light or turns on the element, the heating element. And it does that through this relay that sits the top relay that sits off to the side here. Back here on this side uh, I'm going to also turn the steam on and that came on we can tell it's using 970, uh, 970 watts right now as it starts to heat up. Actually both boilers may be on. When the boiler comes up to temperature it appears as though this solenoid opens briefly to relieve the pressure in that boiler uh, so that when you open the, uh, if the spout were open, you, didn't, you wouldn't get blasted. On the service boiler, steam boiler back here, uh, there's a little relief valve here that allows pressure to build up and then eventually seals the tank so that you'll actually get steam pressure. Uh, that's what that is right there. Um, things I've worked through in trying to get this unit to work. Um, at first it wouldn't pump at all, uh, so I had to prime it. That's pretty common, I guess. Um, so I used a syringe and gave it an initial charge of water so that the pump had something to to pump with and it seems to be accepting water after that. Uh, the other th problem I had was the boiler would not come on and so I had to make sure that the boiler was filling. I did that by removing this sensor wire back here and this hose and when I turned the unit on the control board said I don't have any water turn on the pump, the pump came on and water uh, came out of this hose here. So we were, um, we were fortunate. All right. Close the nozzle. Turn on the water. So water has started to dispense. Off the water and hot water. Seems to work fine. Uh, last thing we want to do is make sure the steam comes on. Looks like the steam comes on. Let's make a cup of espresso. Nice green. I'm going to use a pod. These uh, this espresso pods are um, an open standard for uh, easy espresso, it's called ESE pods, uh, easy standard espresso or something like that, um, that are pretty common in Europe. It's so that individual companies all don't develop their own standard and none of the pods are interchangeable. These, uh, so not surprisingly because anybody can make these, they're cheaper uh, and they also happen to be biodegradable, so uh, not a bad solution. I'm going to take one of those, put one in the in the hopper here, close the hopper up, and we're going to make espresso.
There is no automatic shutoff on this machine. It's kind of a small cup, but take it. And then if we want to get brave, we'll try to put a little bit of crema on the top of that. Sorry, not crema. We're going to put a little bit of a little bit of cream on top of that. I'm going to do it by uh, we enter the put the wand into our milk and we turn on the steam. And it gives us some preheated cream. Now we'll move this out of the way. And I think I'm going to try to catch it with this big bucket here. But because this has um, milk in it, we're going to clean it out. And what will happen is uh, when we turn on the steam, it will siphon water directly from the tank through the wand, back out through the hose, and back out through the wand. So we don't end up with sour milk in the hose. So, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to put this thing back together and figure out what I'm going to do with it. Uh, I asked the guy uh, who was giving it away if he wanted it back, if I could fix it, and I think he's still checking with the wife. So we'll see. Otherwise, I might hold on to this one. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for coming.